Hey guys, in today's video, we will share the incredible and moving story of Valentina Quintana, a channel psychic who had a transformative experience after the death of her husband, Liam. Not only did Valentina continue to communicate with Liam on the other side, but she also received disturbing visions about the future, including predictions of violence and a possible civil war in the United States. You won't want to miss this story full of mystery and spirituality. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications and leave a like so you don't miss any details of this fascinating spiritual journey. Let's go. Hello, my name is Valentina Quintana. I'm 65 years old and have worked as a channel psychic for almost four decades. My life has been a fascinating journey of spiritual discoveries and connections with the afterlife. I was born in Tucson, Arizona, a city surrounded by deserts and mountains, which has always inspired me with its natural beauty and mystical energy. From a young age I felt that there was something more than the physical world that we could see and touch. He had a keen sensitivity to energies and sometimes perceived presences that others did not notice. However, it wasn't until I was 28 that my life took a completely new direction, leading me to embrace my psychic gifts and begin working as a medium. I am a curious person by nature, always seeking to learn more about the spiritual world and how we can connect with it. I love reading, meditating, and spending time in nature. My home in Tucson is a haven filled with crystals, candles, and spiritual objects that help me maintain a high vibration. Over the years, I have had the privilege of helping hundreds of people reconnect with their departed loved ones. It is a job that brings me a lot of joy and fulfillment. Seeing the relief and peace on people's faces when they receive a message from beyond words is indescribable. My spiritual journey gained even more depth when I met my late husband, Liam Montgomery, during a conference in Hawaii. He was an incredible British psychic medium, and together we explored the limits of our psychic abilities. Our partnership was not only romantic, but also professional and spiritual. Today I want to share with you an experience that completely changed my life and my perception of reality. It was an event that occurred in 1987 when I was 28 years old, and that opened the doors to my psychic awakening. This is the story of my near-death experience, a moment that redefined my understanding of life, death, and everything in between. It was a summer afternoon in Tucson. The scorching Arizona sun was beating down outside. I was at home, enjoying a rare moment of tranquility. At the time, I was working as a yoga teacher and was starting to become more deeply interested in spirituality. I had just read a book about deep meditation and decided to try some of the techniques described. I prepared my usual meditation space, a cozy corner of the room with soft pillows and scented candles. I played soft music in the background, sounds of nature mixed with delicate flute notes. I sat in the lotus position, closed my eyes and began to breathe deeply, following the instructions I had read. Little by little I felt more relaxed, my mind calmed down. Everyday worries were dissipating like fog under the morning sun. I focused on my breathing, watching the air go in and out of my lungs. I can't say how much time passed, but at one point, I felt a subtle change in the environment around me. It was as if the air had become denser, more vibrant. My body began to tingle, a strange sensation but not unpleasant. It was as if every cell of my being was awakening to something new. And then I listened not with my physical ears, but somewhere inside my mind. Voices. Soft, gentle, but unequivocal. Valentina, said the voices, you are dying. At first I didn't feel scared. It was as if those words had come from far away and didn't make complete sense to me. But then, the reality of what was happening began to set in. My heart raced. My breathing became irregular. I wanted to open my eyes, move, scream for help, but I couldn't. It was as if my body no longer belonged to me. And then, it happened. I felt like I was being pulled up, out of my body. It was an indescribable sensation, as if I were made of light and was expanding beyond the limits of my skin. I saw my body sitting on the meditation cushion, motionless as if I were sleeping. But I was awake, more awake than I had ever been. As I observed my body from above, a feeling of deep peace enveloped me. 
all of the initial fear dissipated, replaced by an intense curiosity and a sense of freedom that I had never experienced before. It was as if all the weights and worries of earthly life had been lifted from my shoulders. I looked around me and noticed that the familiar atmosphere of my living room was changing. The walls seemed to dissolve, giving way to a vast, luminous space. It was not dark as night, nor bright as day. It was a soft, welcoming light that seemed to come from every direction and nowhere at the same time. I felt attracted to this light, as if it was calling me. I began to move toward it, not walking or flying, but simply wanting to be there. The movement was fluid, effortless. As I went further, I started to hear sounds. They weren't exactly songs, but perfect harmonies that seemed to resonate with the very essence of the universe. Suddenly I realized I wasn't alone. There were presences around me, entities of light that radiated love and wisdom. They didn't have defined shapes, they were more like fields of pulsating energy. I recognized some of these presences as beings I knew, although I could not name specifically who they were. It was as if I knew them on a level deeper than earthly memory. One of these presences approached me. I felt a wave of unconditional love so intense that if I had still been in my physical body, I probably would have fallen to my knees. The entity communicated with me, not through words, but through pure thoughts and feelings. Welcome, Valentina, said the presence. You are experiencing a transition. It is not your time to leave permanently, but you were brought here to learn and grow. I wanted to ask a thousand questions at the same time about life, death, the purpose of existence. But before he could formulate any coherent thought, the entity continued. You have a gift, Valentina, a gift to connect worlds. Your journey on Earth is far from over. There is much work to be done, many souls to help. But first, you must understand. And with that, I felt myself being taken on a journey through time and space. I saw past lives, possible futures. I experienced the interconnectedness of all things, the cosmic web that binds all existence together. It was overwhelming and at the same time perfectly natural, as if I was remembering something I always knew but had forgotten. During my journey through the spiritual realm, I received a series of profound lessons that completely changed my perspective on life and death. The light entities that guided me seemed to have infinite knowledge and shared with me information that my human mind could barely comprehend. One of the first lessons I learned was about the illusory nature of death. The entities showed me that what we call death is just a transition, a change of state. Consciousness, the essence of who we are, never really dies. It just changes form, like water going from a liquid to a gas. Another important lesson was about the purpose of life. I was led to understand that we are here to learn, grow, and evolve spiritually. Every challenge, every relationship, every experience we have on Earth is a learning opportunity. The entities showed me that the universe is like a big school, and the Earth is just one of many classrooms. I also learned about the importance of love and compassion. I saw how every act of kindness, no matter how small, creates waves of positive energy that spread throughout the universe. Likewise, acts of hatred or selfishness create negative ripples. I understood that we have much more power than we imagine to influence the world around us. The entities taught me about the law of karma, but in a much deeper way than I had ever understood before. It wasn't about punishment or reward, but about balance and learning. Every action we take creates a reaction, not necessarily in this life, but at some point in our spiritual journey. One of the most impactful lessons was about the nature of time. In the spiritual dimension, the past, present, and future seem to exist simultaneously. I was able to see events from my past and envision future possibilities all at the same time. I understood that the linear time we experience on Earth is just a small part of a much more complex reality. The entities also showed me the importance of meditation and spiritual connection. I learned that through these practices we can raise our vibration and tune into higher frequencies, allowing us to access wisdom and guidance from the spiritual plane. Finally, 
I received a clear message about my life purpose. The entities showed me that I had the ability to be a bridge between the physical and spiritual world. My mission would be to help people understand that death is not the end, and that our departed loved ones are still with us in a different way. All of these lessons were conveyed, not just through concepts but through direct experiences. It was as if each lesson was recorded not only in my mind, but in every fiber of my being. I knew that when I returned, these lessons would stay with me, even if the specific details of the experience became hazy over time. After what seemed like an eternity, although time didn't have the same meaning on that plane, I felt like I was being called back. The light entities that guided me began to move away, but not before giving me one last message. Remember, Valentina, you are never alone. We are always here, ready to guide and support. Your journey on Earth is just beginning. Use what you learn here to light the path for others. I felt a wave of gratitude and love so intense that it felt like my entire being would dissolve into it. And then, I began to feel a tug, gentle but insistent, bringing me back to my physical body. The transition back was less smooth than the exit, I felt like I was being squeezed, forced back into a space that felt too small to contain everything I had become. My physical senses began to awaken one by one. First, there was the audition. The soothing sounds of the meditation music I had turned on seemed strangely loud and discordant compared to the heavenly harmonies I had experienced. Then came the sense of smell. The scent of the scented candles was strong and almost sickly. When I finally managed to open my eyes, the late afternoon light streaming through the window seemed blinding. I blinked several times trying to focus my vision. My body felt heavy, like it was made of lead. I tried to move and felt pain in several places, probably from staying in the same position for so long. Slowly I began to reorient myself in the physical space. I was exactly where I had started my meditation, sitting on the cushion in the corner of the room. I looked at the clock and was shocked to see that only two hours had passed. It seemed impossible that this entire experience could have happened in such a short period of time. I tried to get up, but my legs were numb. I had to wait a few minutes massaging my muscles before I could stand. When I finally did, I felt momentary dizziness. Text. It was as if my body and mind were still adjusting to being back in physical reality. I walked to the kitchen with unsteady steps to drink a glass of water. The cool liquid running down my throat helped me feel more grounded in reality. I looked out the window and saw the world outside continuing as normal. Cars passing by, people walking, birds flying. Everything felt at once familiar and strangely new. At that moment, I was overcome by an overwhelming emotion. Tears started streaming down my face. They were not tears of sadness, but of deep gratitude and admiration for the miracle of life. I knew nothing would be the same from then on. He had received a glimpse of something. In the days following my near-death experience, I felt like I was living in two worlds at once. On the one hand, there was the daily routine, waking up, having coffee, going to work. On the other, there was a constant, overwhelming awareness of a greater, deeper reality that I now knew existed. Sleeping became a challenge. Every time I closed my eyes, I was flooded with images and sensations from my experience. They weren't exactly dreams, but vivid memories that seemed to want to fix themselves in my mind. I woke up many times during the night, sweating and with my heart racing, not from fear, but from an intense emotion that I couldn't name. My perception of the world around me has also changed drastically. Colors seemed more vibrant, sounds clearer. Sometimes I would catch myself staring at a flower or a leaf, marveling at the complexity and beauty that had previously gone unnoticed. It was as if my senses had been amplified, allowing me to experience the world in a completely new way. Interactions with other people have become both deeper and more challenging. I could feel people's emotions and energies in a way I had never experienced before. This was fascinating, but also exhausting. Sometimes I needed to isolate myself for a few hours to process everything I was feeling. My work as a yoga teacher took on a new dimension. 
As I guided my students through the postures and breathing exercises, I felt connected to a source of wisdom that went beyond my formal training. Words of guidance and comfort flowed through me in a way that seemed almost supernatural. I started keeping a journal, trying to capture in words what I had experienced and how I was feeling. It was a frustrating exercise. How do you describe colors to someone you've never seen? How can you explain the flavor of an exotic fruit to someone who has never tasted it? But I persisted, feeling it was important to document this journey in some way. I also started looking for information about near-death experiences. I read books, watched documentaries, participated in online forums. I discovered that many people had gone through similar experiences to me, and this brought me a sense of comfort and validation. However, I also felt isolated. Despite having read about other experiences, I didn't personally know anyone who had gone through something similar. My friends and family, although loving and well-meaning, couldn't really understand what I was going through. Some seemed skeptical, others worried about my mental health. It was during this period that I began to feel a calling to something more. The lessons I had received during my experience echoed in my mind constantly. I knew I had received this glimpse of the beyond for a reason, and that I had a responsibility to share what I had learned. Little by little, I began to realize that my life was taking a new direction. What I didn't know yet was how profoundly this change would affect not just me, but countless other people in the years to come. About a month after my near-death experience, I began to notice significant changes in my perception and sensitivity. At first, they were subtle things. A sudden chill for no apparent reason, a feeling of deja vu more frequent than usual, vivid dreams that seemed premonitory. But then, something extraordinary happened. I was teaching a yoga class when... Suddenly, I saw a luminous figure next to one of my students. It was an ethereal presence, almost transparent, but undeniably there. I blinked several times, trying to understand what I was seeing. The figure smiled at me and made a gesture of thanks before disappearing. After class, the student came to talk to me. With tears in her eyes, she told me that she had felt the presence of her late father during the practice. She described a feeling of peace and love that enveloped her. I was speechless, realizing that what I had seen was real. That was just the beginning. In the days and weeks that followed, similar experiences became more and more frequent. I started seeing auras around people, each with different colors and intensities. Sometimes I heard voices or received messages that seemed to come from nowhere but contained accurate and relevant information. At first I was scared by these new abilities. It was overwhelming and at times, I felt overwhelmed by so much sensory and energetic information. There were times when I questioned my sanity, wondering if this entire experience had just been an elaborate hallucination. But little by little, with practice and patience, I learned to control and channel these new skills. Meditation has become a crucial tool in this process. Through it, I was able to calm my mind and better tune in to the energies around me. I began to study more deeply about mediumship, clairvoyance, and other psychic abilities. I participated in workshops, read specialized books, and looked for mentors who could guide me on this new journey. Each new learning seemed to awaken my gifts even more. It was around this time that I decided to transition from yoga teacher to full-time psychic medium and channel. It wasn't an easy decision. I was afraid of what people would think, afraid of not being taken seriously. But the call was too strong to ignore. I started doing readings for friends and family. At first, they were hesitant and uncertain sessions. But as I gained confidence, the messages became clearer and more precise. People's reactions were deeply moving, tears of joy, sighs of relief, expressions of peace and comfort. I realized I had found my true purpose. I was using the gifts I had been given to help people, to bring comfort and healing. Each session, each message delivered, each connection made with the spiritual world reminded me of the lessons I had learned during my near-death experience. It was as if everything in my life had prepared me for this moment. The journey was just beginning, but I felt ready to embrace it with all my heart and soul. Although I was excited about my new gifts and the work I was doing, it wasn't all easy. 
The path of a medium and psychic channel is full of challenges, both personal and professional. One of the biggest challenges I faced was the skepticism and sometimes hostility of some people. Longtime friends drifted away, unable to understand or accept my new reality. Family members expressed concern, fearing that I had become involved in something dangerous or fraudulent. I remember a particularly painful occasion when I was invited to a family dinner. My older brother, a respected doctor, spent the entire night making sarcastic comments about my work, calling it carnival tricks. I left that dinner hurt and questioning my choices. But for every person who walked away, there seemed to be two or three who came closer, seeking guidance and comfort. I started to build a community around me, people who understood and respected my work, who saw value in what I was doing. Another significant challenge was learning to set limits. In the beginning, I wanted to help everyone, all the time. It was available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As a result, I felt constantly drained, both physically and emotionally. I learned the hard way that I needed to take care of myself so I could take care of others. I established work schedules, created self-care rituals, and learned to say no when necessary. It was a difficult process, but essential for my well-being and the quality of my work. Professionally, I faced the challenge of establishing my credibility in a field often viewed with suspicion. I invested in my education, participating in conferences, workshops, and psychic development courses. I sought certifications and joined reputable organizations of mediums and psychics. I also had to learn how to deal with the business aspect of my job, something I wasn't prepared for. Marketing, pricing, financial management, all of this was new to me. I made mistakes, of course, but each mistake was a learning opportunity. One of the most challenging, but also most rewarding aspects was learning to deal with people's expectations. Many came to me expecting definitive answers to all their questions, or wanting me to make decisions for them. I had to learn to gently guide people to their own answers, helping them trust their own intuition and inner wisdom. There were moments of doubt, of course. Moments when I wondered if I had made the right decision, if I was really making a difference. But then I would receive a thank you email from a client whose life had been transformed by a session, or see the relief in the eyes of someone who had finally been able to say goodbye to a deceased loved one, and I knew I was on the right path. Each challenge made me stronger. Each obstacle taught me a valuable lesson. I realized that personal and spiritual growth was an ongoing journey, and that each experience, good or bad, was an opportunity for evolution. Over the years, I have had the privilege of working with a wide variety of people, each with their own unique story and spiritual needs. Some encounters, however, stand out in my memory as particularly transformative, not just for my clients, but for me as well. One such encounter was with Sarah, a young mother who had lost her five-year-old son in a car accident. When Sarah walked into my office, the pain in her eyes was palpable. She sat down, shaking slightly, and told me that she didn't really believe in psychics, but that she was desperate for any kind of comfort. As soon as we started the session, I felt a childlike presence next to Sarah. It was a joyful, vibrant energy, full of love. I began to describe what I was feeling and seeing. I talked about a blue teddy bear, a specific cartoon the boy loved, and a lullaby Sarah used to sing to him. As I shared this information, I saw Sarah's face change. The tears started to fall, but there was a smile forming on her lips. She confirmed every detail, amazed. So I conveyed the message that the boy's spirit wanted her to know, that he was okay, that he was always by her side, and that he wanted her to be happy again. At the end of the session, Sarah hugged me, sobbing with relief and gratitude. She told me that for the first time since her son's death, she felt like she could move on with her life. Seeing this transformation, this healing beginning to happen, was deeply moving for me. Another notable encounter was with a man named Robert, a skeptical and pragmatic executive who came for a session at his wife's insistence. He walked into my office with his arms crossed, clearly uncomfortable and skeptical. However, as soon as I started the session, I was inundated with information about Robert's business. I saw numbers, contracts, 
details of an important negotiation that was taking place. I shared everything I was receiving, including a warning about a business partner who wasn't being completely honest. I saw Robert's skepticism turn to shock and then reluctant acceptance. He confirmed that all information was accurate and that the warning about the business partner made sense given some recent developments. But the most powerful moment came when I felt the presence of Robert's deceased father. I conveyed a message of pride and love for the father, along with an apology for harsh words spoken in the past. Robert, this tough, skeptical man, began to cry silently. At the end of the session, Robert thanked me sincerely. He told me that although he still didn't fully understand what had happened, he knew he had experienced something profound and meaningful. These encounters, and many others like them, constantly reminded me of the healing power of spiritual connection. Each session was an opportunity to not only convey messages, but to facilitate healing, forgiveness, and love. I learned that my role was not just to be a conduit for messages from beyond, but also to be a compassionate and supportive presence for people who were going through difficult times. Each client taught me something new about the resilience of the human spirit and the depth of love that transcends death. Over the years, as my psychic gifts developed, I began to receive not only messages from beyond, but also glimpses of the future. These visions often came during moments of deep meditation or during particularly intense sessions with clients. At first, I was frightened by these premonitions, unsure of how to deal with this new aspect of my abilities. One of the first significant visions I had was about drastic climate change. I saw images of devastating storms, prolonged droughts, and rising sea levels affecting coastal cities. These visions were accompanied by a sense of urgency, as if the spiritual world was trying to alert us to the need for immediate action. Another recurring vision was about surprising technological advances. I saw people interacting with holograms as if they were physical objects, flying cars in cities and even colonies on Mars. But along with these technological marvels was a warning about the dangers of misusing artificial intelligence and the need to maintain our humanity in an increasingly digital world. One of the most disturbing predictions I received was about global conflicts. I saw images of mass protests, rising tensions between nations, and even the possibility of civil war in the United States. These visions were accompanied by a sense of fear and anxiety, but also by a message of hope, that through mutual understanding and compassion, we could avoid the worst of these scenarios. However, not all visions were grim. I saw glimpses of a future where humanity had learned to live in harmony with nature, using renewable energy, and practicing a more sustainable way of life. I saw incredible medical advances, including cures for diseases that we now consider incurable. One of the most powerful visions I had was about a shift in global consciousness. I saw people from all parts of the world awakening to their spiritual nature, recognizing our fundamental interconnectedness. It was as if humanity was undergoing its own collective near-death experience, emerging with a new understanding of our place in the universe. Dealing with these visions of the future was not easy. I felt a great responsibility to share this information, but I also had to be careful not to cause panic or false hope. I learned to present these visions as possibilities, not fixed destinations. I have always emphasized that the future is not written in stone, that our actions and choices in the present can shape what is to come. One of the most important lessons I learned from these visions of the future was about the power of collective intention. I saw how our thoughts, beliefs, and mass actions can literally shape the reality we experience. This has led me to focus much of my work on helping people understand their own power to create positive change, both in their personal lives and in the world around them. These visions of the future also reinforced for me the importance of balance between the material and spiritual world. I saw that many of the challenges we would face as a society were the result of an imbalance, of having turned away from our spiritual nature in favor of materialism and extreme individualism. Over time, I learned to see these visions of the future not as fixed predictions, but as invitations to reflection and action. Every glimpse of what could be was an opportunity to prepare ourselves, to make better choices, to create the future we want to see. Today, when I share these visions with others, 
I always emphasize the importance of hope and positive action. I remind people that the future is in our hands, that each of us has the power to make a difference. And most of all, I remind everyone that no matter what the future may bring, love, compassion, and our spiritual connection are the most powerful forces we have to face any challenge that may arise. Looking back on the years that have passed since my near-death experience, I marvel at the journey I've been on. From a yoga teacher confused and scared by her new abilities, I transformed into a confident and dedicated psychic medium and channel. This journey was not easy. There were moments of doubt, of fear, of exhaustion. There were days when I questioned everything, my abilities, my purpose, even the reality of my near-death experience. But for every moment of doubt, there were dozens of moments of confirmation, of deep connection, of healing and transformation. I learned that being a medium and psychic channel is not just about transmitting messages from beyond. It's about being present, really present for people in their most vulnerable moments. It's about offering comfort, hope, and a broader perspective on life and death. My near-death experience taught me that death is not the end, but a transition that the love and connections we form throughout our lives continue beyond the physical plane. This knowledge became the foundation of my work and my life. Over the years, I have had the privilege of helping hundreds of people reconnect with their loved ones, find peace and closure, and see life from a broader, more spiritual perspective. Each session, each connection established, reaffirmed for me the importance of this work. Of course, not everything was rosy. I faced skepticism, sometimes even hostility. I had to learn to deal with the emotional toll of constantly being in touch with grief and loss. But I also experienced a joy and fulfillment that I never imagined possible. One of the most important lessons I learned is the importance of balance. Balance between the spiritual world and the physical world. Between giving and receiving. Between work and rest. I learned that to be an effective channel for energy and messages from beyond, I need to take care of myself, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Another crucial lesson was about the nature of truth and reality. My experience has shown me that there is much more to the universe than we can see or touch, but I also learned to respect other people's beliefs and perspectives, even when they differ from mine. I learned that each person has their own journey their own path to truth. Today, at 65 years old, I look back with gratitude for each step of this journey. The frightened young woman who experienced a departure from her body during meditation nearly four decades ago has transformed into a wise, compassionate woman deeply connected to the spiritual world. I still have a lot to learn, of course. Each day brings new lessons, new challenges, new opportunities for growth. But now I approach these lessons with joy and curiosity, knowing that each experience is an opportunity for evolution. My near-death experience was the catalyst for a life of service, connection, and deep meaning. It was a gift that changed not only my life, but the lives of countless other people who crossed my path. To those reading this who may be going through their own transformative experiences or questioning the meaning of life, I say, trust the journey. Trust your intuition, your connection with the divine. Be open to the infinite possibilities of the universe. Always remember, death is not the end. It's just a transition. The love we feel, the connections we make, the lessons we learn, all of this continues beyond the physical veil. And while we are here, on this earthly journey, we have the wonderful opportunity to grow, to love, to evolve. My near-death experience showed me that we are all part of something much bigger, much more wonderful than we can imagine. And it is with this awareness that I continue my journey, grateful for each moment, each challenge, each opportunity for connection and growth. May the light and love that I experienced on that spiritual plane touch and transform your lives as they transformed mine. That is my hope, my prayer and my continued purpose in this wonderful life I am privileged to live. So, what did you think of this incredible story? Leave your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Activate the notification bell to be notified with each new video.
Let's bring more people the hope that there is life beyond what the eyes can see.